Well, with a new week comes a new project. We've got a Fusion fifth wheel here. Uh, I'm actually not sure on the year. Might be in my notes somewhere. But uh, we are putting 1,600 watts of solar on top. 400 amp hour battery, the full Victron treatment. Let's get into it. All right, let's take a look at what we got going on, what we're going to do. So in uh, this bay here, that's where we got, that's what the current system is looking like. It's two Optima batteries. And uh, so we're just going to remove those. We don't need those anymore. And this will be storage space for whatever uh, the gentleman would like. And then in here, we've got this torn apart. We are planning to put uh, the two batteries in the back corner there and the rest of it on this back wall here, leaving this accessible for any of the uh, mechanicals that may need to be addressed as time goes on. That's something we always try and be cognizant of is maintainability once this is done. We don't want this to button this all up and just to have to tear it apart to actually work on something. Then for the solar, I got this prepped here. I got our bundle of wires ready to go. That's going to be going up one of the vent tubes here and out the top. So that should work good. Then inside here, uh, I've already disabled the converter. My thought with that was I just uh, taped up the positives and then I don't have to worry about uh, it charging. So it should never actually pull any power. Then we got the display mounted here and uh, I ended up having to add an extra piece of backing material here for the old uh, in-command system, which we're, is still going to be there, of course, but uh, this, this wood in particular is extremely thin. Look at that. I think it's, it, it's thinner than typical Luon. There is not much to these walls, but the good news is the cavity on this wall goes straight down to that bay. Like, didn't have to drill a hole, nothing. It was straight shot. Super easy. Super easy. So, that's what we got going on. Let's take a look at the batteries and the inverter board. And here's how we got the battery set up. Plan here is uh, we mounted it to this board and then we can slide that right into place, secure that down, rather than having to make all of these individual connections while it's installed and that way if you ever need to service it same thing a couple of screws the whole thing slides out love doing this here is the board we got a couple more things to do here and then we got to program it we're using the uh, cable raceway everywhere we've really been liking using this bigger stuff uh, and the other thing that's been a little tricky is uh we've actually been trying to find a way to to shave this uh, disconnect down because we're not putting on it here because we're going to try and put it right in the spot where the old one was and I'll show you that in a minute but it's just this is just a shade too big and it's going to be really hard to drill another hole let me let me show you what I'm talking about here So, this is the hole that the old disconnect was in, and anybody who's drilled a hole will tell you, trying to make that hole just a little bit bigger is kind of a problem. So, we're trying to make the disconnect just a little bit smaller. Uh, but the reason why we're doing that is because we want the disconnect to be accessible. Uh, same thing with the solar disconnects, we're going to mount that here because we want them accessible. We could mount them on the board, but then good luck actually being able to disconnect it. Try and keep it accessible, try and keep it usable. So, that is the thought there. I don't know. Maybe we can wallow that out a little bit too. If anybody's got any tips on how to make a hole just a little bit bigger, let me know. And then we got Coco here. She's overseeing everything. Uh, if you ever stop by and visit, you gotta say hi. She will demand pets and tummy rubs. Right, girl? Uh, she's busy. 
Let's not bother her anymore. <laughs> and here's how we got the battery set up. Plan here is uh, we mounted it to this board and then we can slide that right into place, secure that down, rather than having to make all of these individual connections while it's installed. And that way if you ever need to service it, same thing, a couple of screws, the whole thing slides out. Love doing this. Here is the board. We got a couple more things to do here and then we got to program it. We're using the uh, cable raceway everywhere. We've really been liking using this bigger stuff. Uh, and the other thing that's been a little tricky is uh, we've actually been trying to find a way to to shave this uh, disconnect down because we're not putting on it here because we're going to try and put it right in the spot where the old one was. And I'll show you that in a minute. But it's just, this is just a shade too big and it's going to be really hard to drill another hole. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is the hole that the old disconnect was in. And anybody who's drilled a hole will tell you, trying to make that hole just a little bit bigger is kind of a problem. So, we're trying to make the disconnect just a little bit smaller. Uh, but the reason why we're doing that is because we want the disconnect to be accessible. Uh, same thing with the solar disconnects, we're gonna mount that here because we want them accessible. We could mount them on the board, but then good luck actually being able to disconnect it. Trying to keep it accessible, trying to keep it usable. If anybody's got any tips on how to make a hole just a little bit bigger, let me know. And then we got Coco here. She's overseeing everything. Uh, if you ever stop by and visit, you gotta say hi. She will demand pets and tummy rubs. Oh, oh. Yeah. It's almost there. Think those screws will pull it in? I think yeah, I I think so. I think we're there. The screws will finish that off. Man. Look at that nice disconnect. Oh, here's a little update on the uh, battery situation. I know it kind of looks like a mess, but it's all coming together. It's Truth is, this is the way that uh, the RV manufacturers put it together. They don't do a lot of organization back here. So there's only so much we can do, but we do have the solar lines run to a breaker over there. I don't know if we can see that. We don't have them run back to our board, but JD's getting things sorted out for the board right now. Oops. Oops. Speaking of JD, Oop. there he is. Oop. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Oop life. So he's uh actually make a great Minnesota brand. Oh yeah. Oop life. That is a it is a thing. Are you for real? Yeah, that's a thing. Oh man. There's some comedian out of Wisconsin that uh, he does all the stuff. I am so behind. You are. You got what is trendy? What is yeah. not? <laughs> what is what is life? I don't know. So here's uh, inside here, we got that buttoned up, got the uh, display mounted, nothing's turned on yet, we still got, we're about, uh, about two, three o'clock, second day, we're getting close to putting that board in there and then things are going to light up. Alright, so we're getting ready to install this here, JD's just pre-drilling some, or pre-setting some screws. And uh, something we did that we've never really done before is we pre-wired the uh, AC in and out lines, we marked one of them, just because it's easier to do it here because it's going to be tight in that bay. And we're going to end up with a little bit of wastage on the 6-3 wire there, but uh, you got to pick your battles. I think it'll save a lot of headache trying to get that wired yep. in upside down. For sure. Laying so, on your back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, there's already going to be enough cramp work, so. Here we go. I think, uh, uh, I'll have to fit that one in. When JD does stuff, fact. when JD does something, it doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't go nowhere. No. All right, well, you'll probably hear or see from us next when it's installed. All right, let's, up, see, let's see what JD's getting oh, into here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. We can tuck this right here. 
Down in the links, that's our uh, DC for the coach. Yeah. Uh, a negative. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, you got room. Oh yeah, we got lots back there. Yeah, I, I see. That. It. That's got a land right here. Uh, these positives are actually no, these ones are up here. This is our. This guy goes to here. This is this the flat end. This guy goes here. And this one is the long one that goes down over here. All right. Yeah, we made it a little more complicated by using the factory shutoff, but I think that's going to make more sense for the customer. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, I might have an answer. We're we were going going from here just to here, right? We were, yeah. <laughs> I got a little bit extra here. Yeah, you can see the just <laughs> there's the automatic transfer switch. That's where we're trying to get so to. So we just go. Whoop. You know what? I've wasted more wire doing sillier things, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, that's true. Looks good. That panel looks nice. It does. Well, we still got a couple of things to take care of, uh, but inside. It's looking pretty good. So remember, back there we got the four Battleborn batteries. Uh, everything we need to is there. The batteries are charging. Uh, JD here is cutting a piece of trim. That uh, I'll show you where that goes. That's gonna go right here to fill this spot. Uh, that's what used to be here. Got our disconnect here. Got our connections made on the automatic transfer switch. Couldn't even tell we were in there. And of course, uh, that shutoff is looking great in there, huh? Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here comes the wall right now. Look at that. He's, he's fast. Oh, I think uh, we're going to need to trim up on top. I think we are. Need a little notch for the cables that we put. Who put, who, who put those cables in? I, who, who put some them? vagrant came. You want to mark that, please? I will. Okay. Uh, Go right to there. Oh man, like a glove. Like a glove. This is. This All is. Right. Uh, Smart. And you just cut that with your utility knife, huh? Or my teeth. <laughs> well, today's the day. Customers picking up. Project's done. Let's review what we have and what it looks like. Let's start in the main bay. What we did. So. As you can see here, uh, this bay does not look a whole lot different space-wise. Uh, batteries are back behind the far back panel there, tucked away in between the water heater and furnace. Uh, we do have a little LED strip in here providing a little bit of extra light. And we just uh, Velcroed that to here so we can change the color. You can go to Halloween mode here, or orange, oh, spooky. And uh, they can move this, but I, I find this to actually really good because they don't lose it and it sticks right to this indoor outdoor carpet. Uh, got uh, everything working good. Everything installed looks great. We got uh, everything wired up, buttoned up, swept out. Love it. Uh, any questions on this? Uh, I think we've gone through a number of them. Leave a comment down below. Um, but. Yeah, there. I, I like the way that turned out. Um, here's the ba old battery bay, and we left the batteries in there. We did disconnect these from being in parallel, uh, and then we just uh, uh, used a nut and bolt, put these together, put some heat shrink over them. Same th same thing here, and we did test starting the generator, running through this line, and that is working just fine. So I think we're in good shape there. And these are also, uh, I think they have breakers. These are all little thermal breakers here. They keep kind of everything in check as well. So I think we're in good shape there. Let's go around the other side. And uh, not a whole lot over here, other than uh, got our solar breakers. And I have these off because actually we were at 100% uh, state of charge and I wanted to see well, how much power do we actually get? Because we're getting close to noon here during the day. So we're going to flip these on and see together. And here's the uh, master on-off switch, which we did replace this old one. Contact. All right. Let's go around uh, inside. 
That's what we got going on. And it looks like, yeah, we're ramping up there a little over 900 watts. Can we get more than 900? So what happens is, I don't know if you can see here, the MPPTs, they start hunting around, trying different PV voltages to find the one that's giving them the most power. And remember, we're only doing six amps across that 10 gauge wire. That's fine, but we're pushing 34 amps into the batteries per charger. Okay, so we're pushing you know, 34 on that other charger. It's almost 70 amps into the battery with this system. Not bad at all. Now, net into the battery is only 10 amps because these absorption fridges are not efficient at all. That is mostly the absorption fridge. There's basically a heater in there that is on all the time. It never shuts off. Uh, a residential refrigerator would be using maybe a third to a quarter of that power and cycle off for about 60 to 70% of the time. Uh, it's just ridiculous how much power those use. Almost four to five kilowatt a day. So uh, it looks like we're peaking around 900. I don't know that we're gonna get more than 900 watts here. Um, we do have, let me just check the time real quick. Well, I guess we should have time on here, shouldn't we? Yeah, oh, we're almost at noon, but that's not solar noon because we do daylight savings time here. Solar noon is not for another hour. Well, here's the roof. We got eight of the 200 watt rich solar 24 volt panels. We're running these in uh, two pairs of series and then each of those in parallel into two separate controllers down there. So one, two, one, two, and then here we got a little crazy. One, two, yeah, or one, two, and then one, two. Reason for this is uh, I wanted to make sure that you'd have room coming up the ladder because not everyone else is it. Not everyone has a sweet scaffold like we do. And uh, I wanted to leave room to walk around it. And uh, if I would have put this other panel on this other side here, we'd potentially get self-shading from the air conditioner. And I'd rather not do that if we don't have to. So we did it there. And there's a room for another panel here. And you could put another panel here if you really wanted to and step over them. Uh, I'm always thinking about expandability. How is this thing going to get bigger? Because believe me, there's never enough solar. Even with 1,600 watts up here, there's never enough. Uh, especially with the uh, with those absorption RV fridges. Hope you enjoyed watching this one. Uh, definitely give us a subscribe or comment. Thumbs up. It helps our channel as we try to stick it to YouTube. If you watched an ad on this video and we don't have 1,000 subs, it's because you aren't subscribed yet. Help us out. YouTube's making money. We're not. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We're having a great time doing this, and we would love to put solar or batteries in your RV, your schoolie, your uh, bus conversion like we have, work truck, work trailer, food truck, uh, playhouse, garden shed, she shed, cabin, fish house, golf cart. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. And again, the uh, thing we love doing, it. we don't like just doing it. We like doing it well. And we feel like our work speaks for itself. So uh, check us out at sodasolar.com, S-O-T-A, solar.com. And uh, thanks for watching.